That, that, so that's, I think, a pattern in his life. Um, <laughs> what I try to do now is, first of all, to probably apologize, because I can only give you a few impressions now of what I think is happening. Yeah? And when we do this, we should think about it in a world where many people tell us that everything is going so fast and changing so fast. Really? Yeah? Because when we look at what's happening in our industry, maybe things are not happening as fast as they should. So one topic I want to raise with you is the one that I would like to call the trend of transformation. And very often in these meetings we think about our industry only, but if you think about this industry, yeah, it took this guy, James Dean, yeah, at his days, yeah, a lot of energy yeah, and a lot of power and a lot of time to dig a hole and find some oil, Today, this inf industry has transformed, and how many people do you think are needed to operate this full drilling thing here? How many do you need to make this rig work? It is six people who can drill 100,000 times more oil than one person was able to do this in the past. Yeah? And the other thing is, of course, it was a big risk for one person to drill this hole. Today, not a single oil rig is owned by one company alone. No one tries to drill a hole in the ocean alone anymore. Why? Because the risk-benefit equation does not make sense. If you want to drill down and solve Alzheimer alone, it's hard. And maybe the risk-reward curve, if you want to do this alone, does not match. The second thing is the Germans had to find out that others can yeah, basically have a technology transformation in the industry, which was the German industry, faster than they, by creating a network in this industry. When you think about the shared economy in the hotel business, there's a real transformation ongoing, because what do you think is the market value of Airbnb 25. now? 25. 25 billion, yeah. How many nights are today on a shared platform booked every day? Billions, yeah? And it's just something where the linear model yeah, of I have a fixed asset and I only have a fixed number of beds that I can give away was with a non-linear equation completely changed. I mean, do you want to smoke your iPod? No, you don't, yeah? <laughs> But it took three billion of R&D money yeah, for a company that had to rethink smoking because there was a shock in this industry where basically the Marlboro Man yeah, and the link to cancer was all of a sudden scientific reality. Yeah? This is now the idea of Philip Morris to transform into a different industry where one thing is clear, I don't know if this will be successful, yeah? but there's not a single industry that can afford yeah, to not think how transformation has to happen in this industry. And there's one thing that is also clear, transformation is only a good thing for the companies that proactively transform. If you wait that your industry is transformed, you will be transformed. That's not what you want to have. So that's why proactive transformation is a key thing that we always should have in mind. How many people do you think are necessary to come to Nemo? Designers, how many people think about this fish here? Yeah. Hundred. It's eight design groups who start at the same starting point to think about a movie without exactly knowing how the movie ends. Yeah? And that's a bit different of how Walt Disney did it. Yeah? So the whole industry has transformed when it comes to movies. Why? Because the consumer has changed. 
because the business in the movies is not made, apologize now, by us. Yeah? It is the people who are 12, 13, 14 years who ultimately bring their parents or go alone to movies because that's where 80% of their revenue lies. That was different when we went for a date when we were 18 to the movies. It's no longer their industry. Yeah? So that's why customer transformation is happening, and we should realize that. Have really all industries transformed? There is one little industry. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about that, yeah, then it is an industry where many of these principles we can discuss, yeah, and we should discuss, and there is room for transformation. That's the first message I wanted to just put down to the room here. Why is transformation happening? Because this is reality. The blockbuster world is over because the development costs are going up, but the sales, despite the fact that we have more approvals than ever before, are per product going down. Why? Because we have better drugs than ever before. This is the result of precision medicine, and it's fantastic but it needs us to rethink our commercial models a bit. This is the next wave of technologies that we will all have to build into our ideas when we come to ultimately the second thing I want to raise here, it's translation. Yeah? All these technologies are only there to make better translation earlier into humans than we have done this in the past. We should not be there and accept that 10 years of A-beta research resulting in many phase three trials is happening on the basis of translations from animals where we then find out 80 billions later that it was just bad. And bad is not scientific enough, that's what I learned at school. Uh, <laughs> And that's why all these technologies here are our future. And that's the coolest time in this industry ever, because these technologies are real, and they are real in order to allow us to translate better than ever before. But that's how we have to look at it. We have to start earlier translation, or we have to stop, because it will not make sense to do anything in phase two if it will not translate to the market. Why is this so important? Because you will see that everything that is human genetics supported has a three times higher success rate. Just think about that. Three times higher success rate if you have a human genetic prediction yeah, that allows you to do something. One thing that is absolutely cool is the world of induced pluripotent stem cells. Yes, it sounded like science fiction 10 years ago when Yamanaka started this whole thing, but it is becoming reality where all of a sudden we can circumvent the translational errors yeah, that are in our models when it comes to early models that don't have any predictability. Let's go to the human, and that's why iPS cells are so important in this process when it comes to translation. Why is this important? Because we have to implant yeah, better knowledge into our drugs. And it's not only about more data in our drugs, it's about knowledge in our drugs. And that's why I love artificial intelligence, and I'm a firm believer of artificial intelligence. It will change our industry, but only if we transform data into knowledge and with this into better translatability of drugs. Otherwise, it's hocus-pocus. Yeah? And that's not what we should all ultimately support and, and invest in. Why is this changing? Because in 2011, yeah, when this gentleman wanted to have his genome sequenced to find out what his pancreatic cancer was all about, yeah, this was $114,000 cost per one full sequencing of one individual. What's the cost of a full sequence today per person? Yeah, if you go with five people, yeah, you get a discount <laughs> in California. 
because it doesn't hurt to go with five, yeah? And then you are below $1,500 already. But if it's only data and not transformed, it doesn't help, yeah? What he said, he wants to either be the first person who to find out what it helps to have your genome so sequenced, or he wants to be the last person who didn't do it, yeah? This is now 10 years later, yeah? We are still not there, but it will come. It will come, and that's why all of a sudden we will have a completely different level of translatability into the clinic than ever before. This is important because the game and the players are changing. Yeah? And here we always look about this intervention of IBM into our chess industry that they say they wanted to do something bad. No, IBM is in principle a good company yeah? because they reminded us yeah, that the players in a game which was human-driven all of a sudden can change. And that's also what's happening here, that the fixed cost silos will have to learn that it's new players all of a sudden. And along the value chain, I mean, why would you build a clinical operation to make one clinical trial in Alzheimer? Sharing a platform is good for everyone. Yeah? And that's why here the conversion yeah, from fixed costs to variable costs is just the beginning because it will allow us all to make more experiments in faster timelines and it will allow us capital elasticity, which is a key to, I mean, it's a bit technical uh, and no one really knows what capital elasticity is all about, but I really like it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> because it feels like this, it's not, of course, but what it does, it allows you behind positive data points very actively put more resources. And if you're not number one or number two in our industry, you cannot win the market because only number one or number two on the market get innovation premium back from the market. If you're number three or number four, not so good. Yeah? But if you put flexible resources behind your positive data points, you can be, even if you're today number three or number four, you can make number one and number two go away if they are too, too slow. That's what this model will allow us to do. You will see that many of these meetings are a bit frustrating because everyone tries to find someone who will invest into his company or into his project. It will come back. And it is so certain that it will come back that this translation from academic projects into the industry is just starting. Why? Because 3,300 diseases need answers. And there is not enough good answers in phase two and phase three. So the earlier we realize that many of us have to go back to square one, yeah, it is good for us. And that's why the funding gap will close, as you see here, it's just more money into the system now, and it's not only efficient money in the system. Yeah? But in general, there is a huge willingness out there yeah, to put more money in this industry than ever before. I know, we want to have it. Yeah? But it will, at, at, at least what we see here, come back because many more people realize that early funding is necessary. And now, last thing I want to mention is, of course, Many things could be now raised as topics that we have to focus on, but let me raise one where I really feel that we are about to forget it as an industry. Yeah? And yes, everyone can always make this argument that we have to do everything for oncology, we have to do everything for CNS, we have to do everything for diabetes, everything, everything, everything. One thing we should not forget is that a collective industry made an exodus out of infectious diseases when it comes to bacterial infections. Yeah? And the exodus is just indicating to us yeah, that if resistance will come, yeah, that our preparedness level is not there. Yeah? And that's just something where I really feel yeah, that we have to understand that today you have, sorry about the numbers here, one you have 20 times more scientific people in immuno-oncology 
than infectious diseases, but you have the same probability to die from oncology or from infectious disease when you're 65 years of age. Yeah? I don't want to die at all, that's the first thing, but yeah, if I have the choice, yeah, I would just say let's reduce this gap a bit, yeah, because there are two dangers out there yeah, that we should focus on. And with this, I don't know how many trends this now were, I just want to probably summarize by saying transformation in an active way and translation yeah, into a much more patient-centric view are two things that we have to focus on being here holi holistic yeah, in the way we think about drug discovery from the very beginning is key. The second thing is we can like it or not like it, but digital things will come and will ultimately be fully converging in the way we have done drugs. The world of diagnostics, maybe they have a separate conference, but no, <laughs> they should be here sitting next to you because if you don't do this at the same time and if you don't integrate also, you know, these variable things and everything, yeah, you will just not make use of all the technologies out there to help a patient. And the third thing is really academic translation is just starting. Yeah? And with this, thank you so much. <laughs>